the Key Radio Studios in Provo, Utah, and broadcasting live throughout Utah County, Sevier County, South Central Utah, Carbon County, and the Uinta Basin. It's your good friends, Mike and Heather, in the morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. We have a, a guest in the studio who's not a pastor. That never happens around here. Wow. But you should know who he is because we've had him on a couple times, and it's always a joy uh, when he returns, because I just feel like um, maybe we got some free, free counseling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not, not that we need it. <laughs> I, I think this is my third time back. Yes. And I thought you guys would have applied the things I've been I talking know. about, but I, I feel like I have to keep. I listen to you guys on Facebook, yeah. and I realize you guys aren't applying everything we've been talking about. It's Heather. It's all my fault. Yeah. Yeah. This is oh, very man. typical. It is our good friend, Jeremy Yackley. He is counselor and director of new initiatives for the Foundations of Christian Counseling. Welcome back. Thank you. Foundations thank you. Christian Counseling. There's no of in there, no preposition. That's true. But I there just is. added it just for flair. Do you appreciate that? No, not at all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Heather. It feels like we're getting a free one here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some free you counseling. It. You need it more we than both I need do. It. Actually, we all need well, we need a lot more than that, but that's okay. We need more than just 55 minutes. And the Bible has answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes we just need someone to point those things out to us. And Absolutely. Sometimes it helps, sometimes. <laughs> let, me, let me finish my introduction. It, it, it helps when you here. listen to yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> what the scriptures say. What? <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't do much benefit. Fine, man. <laughs> Conviction right off the get-go. We're, out of, we're just in trouble here today. We also have Grant's Burkhalter pushing all the buttons, as always. Thanks mm-hmm. for doing what you do yeah. so well. You know, Blair. you mentioned what pushing I buttons. <laughs> and I think you asked me to talk a little bit about anger. Yes. Right. Yes, we did. Anger and pushing it, buttons. Do well, you do that a lot here? I do. Yeah. Do they get Primarily angry at you? Primarily, what I do. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Just Mike. He's the one who issues. <laughs> oh man! But actually, this is this is. I think like. I think this is so relevant to today because just everywhere you look, you hope that there's just like peace somewhere and you go to like social media, which is always, I don't know why we think we're going to get happiness in social media, but there's angry people all over the place. If you're driving, there's angry people. Well, you can just defriend them. You could, but then you don't know why you shouldn't. I mean, you want to know why they're angry. I mean, there's just, it's just this push and shove and, and, and of course you've got the news and there's angry people on the news and people are smacking each other other in the face and it's just like what is going on here i am excited that at least the political scene looks like it's really calming down and people are getting along a lot (laughs) a lot more in the you guys you guys don't you haven't seen that either Uh, no no (laughs) okay i was worried for a second like what rock did you just come up from it's been crazy but uh all of that you know and how are we supposed to be uh, filtering all that through because I don't know, but when I'm watching things, I get my ire up a little bit. I'm like, oh, and I'm getting that feeling of, of stress and anger. And, and how do I deal with that? And, and, you know, I know that the Lord has a lot to say about things about that. And I think that's why, Jeremy, I really love that you're here because you don't just say, well, here's the clinical reason for the blah, 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 blah. What you do is you take what's going on and you identify this as saying, this is really a heart issue. This is this is not about right. anybody else that is getting into your space. This is a deeper problem. At the end of the day, it's not really my circumstances. It's, it's actually something inside of me. Yeah. That's the problem. But you must not be a very popular person because nobody wants to hear that. I mean, <laughs> their well, heart's wrong. I usually don't start off with that line. Oh, okay. <laughs> I usually start off with a catchy, like, quote that I saw in, like, a Facebook meme. Oh, And, and I actually have one. Oh, All right. On do this, share. So, so this, is, this is really deep. Oh. We're going to have to think about this a little bit. I probably post. It. <laughs> yeah, you mind. I, actually, I think that's where every minute you remain angry, you give up 60 seconds of peace. Ooh, think about I'm, that. That's good. That's okay. good. It's kind of one of those quotes. It's not very profound at all. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yes, I understand 60 <laughs> seconds is in a minute. But, I got the math, man. <laughs> but did you just realize like every minute you remain angry, you're giving up mm-hmm. oh, an opportunity to be at peace? Yeah. And I think we all realize that, but how do you deal with it? Because it feels like sometimes <sighs> that you just can't control anything. Like you can't even control your own feelings. And that gets almost to this helpless point. And I think as a response to that helplessness, that's where we get anger too. I mean, it's just always this constant circle of just angst and 
you want to be removed from that. And how do we do that? Um, and, and where does stress play into all of that as well? I've got, this is an interesting thing. Um, I think stress is a huge deal with anger too. Uh, most common sources M- Mike of stress. Mike thinks that stress in your life also contributes to you getting angry as well. He mentioned yeah, that. Probably. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah. But there must be some health benefits to stress and anger though. Um, <laughs> can, you, can we, can we well, find an article? <laughs> if you're taking it out in the gym, maybe, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, future of our nation, money, and work, those are all around the 60% as mm-hmm. far as the common sources of stress for people. Uh, if political climate and violence and crime, those are in the 57, 51% uh, it's categories, which is, I don't know what that math is, but that's okay. But those are the top ones. And I think that's really important to know uh, what those common sources of stress are. But I think that that's not quite hitting the mark. And so we're going to talk about that. And my friend, this is going to be a fabulous conversation. Jeremy is just a wealth of knowledge, and he's going to challenge all of us. I know he is because he does it every time he comes. 855-539-4583 is our text line. I'm going to say that again. 855-KEY-GLUE. How are you doing today? Are you stressed out? Are you angry? Is life not going the way that you planned? Sweet. Good, because then you're right where you need to be right now, listening not to us, but to Jeremy Yackley. Well, you know what? Let's even, maybe to God's word. Oh, okay. Well, don't put too much pressure on me. (laughs) That's so awesome. I could get stressed out. (laughs) Well, we're here for you to stress you out. You could put what you're telling us to practice into practice. I do need to share a story because I think that this kind of, in a weird way, embodies what we're talking about today. Day. There was a couple in Spain, and they were in their home, and they heard this low humming that was in their bedroom. And you know how houses sometimes have a sound? So they're like, okay. But this humming was going on for like two years, and they never really investigated it. They they never, they're just like, yeah, it's part of it, maybe, uh, just never dealing with it. Well, then finally, it got to the point where it was getting louder and louder and louder, And they're finally, like, it's deafening, finally decide they're going to do something about it. They're like, is there bees? What's going on? Well, lo and behold, yeah, for over two years, there were bees that were creating a hive within the walls of their bedroom. 80,000 bees. I want to know who counted all those, because that would be stressful. (laughs) One, (laughs) two... Oh, they're not, they're not standing still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't, don't mess me up. But here's the thing. I mean, I think that's what a lot of us do is in our lives, sometimes there is so much going on and we just think, okay, if I just ignore it, this, this will probably just go away, right? Like, okay, there's this weird stuff happening, um, but, you know, it'll just kind of work itself out. And yeah. you're never dealing with the issue or you're just kind of trying to placate people, right? Yeah, I've, I've tried that with my bills yeah. before and that, <laughs> that didn't work so well. No. So it's not a good strategy really for any any problem. Yeah, and, and but, you know, a lot of times dealing with the things that are causing our stress, that is stressful. And I sometimes I equate this to like you hurt yourself, right? And there's a there's a big gash. Well, you have to clean the wound out, which generally hurts more than getting the gash in the first place. But it's really necessary that we do that because otherwise it's going to get infected and pussy and grody and bad things are going to happen. In much the same way, this couple who just ignored the problem about their bees until whoa, what are we going to do? Um, but I that. I think is just part of a symptom of how we deal with our stress to the point where if we bat it down so much, eventually something's going to blow and it might turn into, ooh, anger manifest itself. Might (laughs) turn into anger? That's my... You're so gracious. (laughs) I'm not the counselor. It's just uh, my observations. So how do we fix this, Jeremy? How do we fix it? Oh, wow. Um, So in five minutes or less, let's try that. (laughs) Or maybe we should start with... Okay, we, we all have different sources of, of problems in our lives, but... Different there, stressors, different circumstances. Is there something common about them all? You know, there, there is, and, and this is kind of uh, one of the interesting facts. You know, when we go to Scripture to find answers, it's amazing that we frequently actually can find them there. And uh, one of the themes about anger and stress in Scripture is that these are the fruit, not of the Holy Spirit, okay? These are the fruit 
of when I try to make everyone operate around my kingdom goals and agenda, around what is important to me, and I try to control my circumstances and people, and anyone who's had a toddler mm. knows that, that that's not possible. <laughs> All right, and, and, and that produces that sense of stress because I've taken on to myself a burden that even God himself did not put on me to control certain elements that only God is really in control on. And I try to play God. And that leads me to becoming stressed and anger because I'm not God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's a big element, the control factor. Okay, so, but that's kind of how we're brought up, right? To control yourself, control this. And, and you know, you got to get your ducks in a row. Uh, we have all of these happy checklists and, and things need to go well, right? You're exactly right. And, and my usual question to that is, or, or response to that is, how's that been working? <laughs> You know, like, like, so wh why do we keep doing the same thing, getting the same response and then upset ab about it? You know, like we, we just try to control more. Uh -huh. And what it does, is it creates more stress, more anger. Mm -hmm. So how do, how, how do we identify these things in our lives that are, are causing the stress? What's, what's some tools that we can use to and just ask your spouse? Yeah, I have all the answers, Mike. Yeah. What if she identify. is the problem? <laughs> they'll, they'll help you identify. Ouch. You know, you know uh, we were talking a little bit during break, and um, uh, the aspect of silence, of quiet, solitary, reflective. You know, how much of our society actually practices taking a moment like the Sabbath, taking a moment like the year of Jubilee, where God instructs us to take time to reflect be at peace and, and and to really assess our own life and our own hearts. And so I, I think that's usually, you know, where it starts is taking some time uh, to reflect inwardly. And I think secondly, it's uh, then making yourself vulnerable to welcome others to commu uh, speak into your life, you know, because I mean, it, the reality is we're all blind to shortcomings in our own life. We don't mm -hmm. like to focus on the places where I'm, I mess up. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't like to admit our mistakes. We feel vulnerable, but frequently we need others to help us see the blind spots in our life that, that we're not willing to look at. What if though, you know, I'm going through some, a crisis in my life, but the very people that you would normally turn to, to get that life giving uh, feedback into your life, uh, they're the cause of all the stress. Maybe it's your entire family. Uh, maybe your kids are, um, not honoring you. In fact, they're not even honoring themselves. Uh, maybe there's some really significant, I would say, sin issues in people's life. When I say sin issues, I'm talking like just really being awful to each other, uh, tearing each other down, everything that is what we would consider ungodly. How do I deal with a situation like that? Because that's the very, especially with the nuclear family, you want it all to be good, but when it starts falling apart, what do you do about that? You know, I, I think the first thing you start with uh, is, is your own desires. Uh, so having a family that functions healthy mm -hmm. is a good desire. But when I make that desire my ultimate desire, that I'm willing to do anything and I will do anything to make that happen, all of a sudden I start to worship a healthy functioning family unit instead of God himself. The reality is it's going to take time for a family system to get healthy. Mm -hmm. And you got to be patient. You have to ultimately trust that God's going to accomplish that. So I think the very first thing, you know, you, you don't necessarily just go to your immediate family members to resolve the problem. I, I think the way the church was set up and the way God designed the church is that you reach out to the body of Christ. You know, the pastor is there to help shepherd individuals through trials like this. There are Christian counselors, different resources, books, seminars, a lot of material there to help people navigate through this. Uh, who might be in dysfunctional relationships or just a dysfunctional lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What if I am not a Christian and the church thing just tries, it just kind of freaks me out? What do I do? I mean, there, no, there's a stressor. Listen to key radio. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But I, I think it really boils down to, and we say this all the time, but we have a designer, and that designer is God himself, Okay. Uh, you are created in his image. Now, that doesn't mean you are God, right? But you have personality. Um, you have, you're have you created for a relationship, um, all of that kind of stuff. And, and so the designer knows what's good for you, right? And he has fashioned you in a loving way. So 
if you are having stress or you don't feel like you're in the right zone, if you will, or however you want to verbalize that, you need to go to the one who created you in the first place because he's the one who has the manual that makes you work, right? You know, yeah. And in fact, we were talking a little bit about parenting and working with the kids. I frequently have parents who come in and they're exasperated. Their kid's out of control. They don't know what to do. And uh, what I have observed a lot of times is that parents put on themselves expectations that you don't find in scripture. Hmm. You know, they think that they have to provide certain uh, aspects of a lifestyle for their children, for their family. They meet certain expectations that God hasn't put on them. And therefore what happens is life starts to get out of control because now we're doing everything that's not expected of us and we're neglecting what actually we're supposed to be doing, what is healthy. And so I, I really think a lot of that goes on to, once again, misapplying biblical texts and expectations. And, and put, you know, we saw it with the Pharisees. The Pharisees were, were putting on a burden to the people that God himself did not put on, and it was stressful. Mm-hmm. And the Pharisees, if you don't know who they are, those were religious leaders of Jesus's day. They were Jewish religious leaders, and they would try to point uh, the Jewish people, you know, just to say, this is what God says. Uh, but they ended up putting a lot of extra laws on top of right, right. what was there, like 600 some odd laws to begin with. That's <laughs> just crazy. So almost like 80,000 bees. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 80,000 bees on this poor people. OK, so we are taught we are taught a lot about stress management anger management. Uh, if, if you are caught uh, road raging, you, got, you get to be put into a, an anger management class uh, that will fulfill the letter of the law or whatever and, and the fines and whatever. Um, is anger management, is stress management, are those things helpful to us? Yeah, so think of it like a skill set. And anytime you, you work hard on developing a better skill set, it's helpful. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, is it actually getting to the root of the problem? Or am I simply learning how to better manage, better manipulate my circumstances myself in order to get the desired outcome I have? But I really haven't changed anything about who I am Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. I really haven't addressed the ultimate desires in my own heart that got me to this point. I'm just managing it differently. I'm managing it more acceptably to society. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I think if we go back to you were talking when we first started about my kingdom uh-huh. and, and, and things getting in the way of, of things being how I want them, would would it be right to say that pride and selfishness are really at the root of a lot of the problems that we have and it's not the people around us. <laughs> it's something yeah. in ourselves. Mike, those are hard words. In, yeah, in I'm, fact, I'm saying this for Heather's sake. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there, you. there's even a lot of secular psychologists who, who can observe and see that circumstances. In fact, you think uh, Netflix, I think, has, a, uh, has a, a documentary on happiness. You know, and they go around to all these uh, impoverished you know, societies and communities, and they basically evaluate that, hey, guess what? These people's circumstances are much worse than ours, but they're much happier. So what is it that ultimately uh, creates happiness uh, with individuals. And uh, I think even Harvard is doing this long, there was a TED talk about this uh, the study that they've been following people for their whole life and trying to evaluate what ultimately uh, makes people most happy. And it came down to, it was, it was relationships, hmm. you know, and, and value and having meaningful relationships from a, a psychologist's observational standpoint. But how do you have meaningful relationships without truly addressing who I am what my desires are, and learning to then work with others and set aside my own ambitions, right? What the New Testament, Christ teaches us, love the Lord your God, first and foremost, then love others, secondly. And then we come kind of like after that, which is kind of the reverse of like pop psychology is that like, you deserve to be happy. You need to do what makes you happy. Yep. You well, the Bible you. teaches us yeah. you want to be happy, then go serve someone. Wow. You know, and so it's, it's a reverse approach. But the science at the end of the day says those people are happier. We are solving all of the world's problems. I think we've identified the world's problems, and it's you. <laughs> or, or in my are case, it's me. me. Are you looking at me? <laughs> no, no. I'm, who, I'm looking. Who is he talking about? I'm looking know. in the mirror. I'm mad at him now. <laughs> Each one of you stressed. is the problem. Yeah, yes. thanks, Grant. We are all the problem. We are all our own problem. And, uh, and one of the biggest issues is just contentment. Uh, there's an expectation that, that we're going to have this <laughs> perfect world around us, and it has to conform to what we want it to be, and it's just it's not going to be. That leads to 
pride and selfishness issues, which lead to anger. And <laughs> and you know, and and sometimes the what we desire, what we want, what we're perceived as being selfish at is a good thing. You know, yeah. Like like we can have desires for something that's good, but then again, it comes back to. But if I'm willing to make those desires ultimate, that's when it becomes a problem, you know. And but there's so many, like, the world around us says, you are entitled to happiness. You are entitled to be Then why happy. aren't they happy? Well, that's just it. Why aren't we? I mean, if that's our entitlement. I, I really, I think scripture teaches, so, so joy is through the spirit. Mm-hmm. I think that joy and happiness, ultimately, real lasting joy and happiness that's not dependent upon circumstances, but it's a true peace inside. I think it's a gift. I don't think it's something we take. You know, it's like love. Try taking love. <laughs> or or better yet, try to be humble or, or be pri- proud, you know, of your humility. You know, it's like, right. I just need to be more humble. Like, it doesn't work that way. It actually has to be a change that goes on inside of us that we can't do ourselves. I think we're creeping up on the solution. Oh. It, it's God. Yeah. It's Jesus. It's always. Yeah. You know, and, and we say that and it sounds so simplistic you know like like that was the answer i learned in my first grade sunday school class and you're telling me we haven't come up with a better answer yet Uh, yeah we haven't (laughs) it is noteworthy to see i'm looking at an article here it says american rage and basically between 66 and 73 percent of people say they get angry at least once a day I would say that probably 100% of those people who were surveyed are lying. (laughs) You think everybody gets angry all the time every Uh, day. All right. I'm pretty sure anyone listening and all of us in this room have already been angry this morning Hmm. and have already been stressed this morning. (laughs) And I can say that because I'm a human and it applies to me. And what generally applies to one human applies to most humans. Okay. All right. So that's just the crux of the issue then. We are human beings. We are stressed out. We are angry people. That's our, our first natural tendency when things aren't going our ways that we are going to be angry and stressed. How do we deal with that? Seriously, just how do I deal with that? I don't want to be angry Isn't there a country person. song about Jesus take the wheel? Yeah. You know, like, it's is that very... <laughs> Or Cletus take the reel? Yeah, I, I'm not real sure. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it, it goes right back to that control element. We've got to be willing to give up the control. Are we going to trust God? Do we actually believe that he has the power to take control of the situations and that it's not going to just spiral out of control? Or do I feel like I have to keep interjecting and taking control of the situation? And that's what's going to lead to it. I mean, I I think of, uh, you know, we talk about our desires. We talk about control, anger, stress, Uh, you know. Uh, I, I, I can think in my own life, you know, with work responsibilities, with, with uh, living in a family, you know, I get stressed, you know, Monday morning, I look at my work schedule and I'm like, how am I going to get this all done? And the reality is usually by the end of the week, I didn't get it all done. <laughs> but guess what? The sun still came up. Most people weren't aware that I didn't finish every single thing on my task list. And life still goes on. We elevate our worries, our concerns, as if it's their ultimate things, as, as if it's the end of the world. We realize the end of the world isn't up to us. Mm. We don't end the world. There's a God in control who's ultimately determining, you know, the, how things really play out. He's working out his will. And so we have to learn to give up control for him, still be responsible. You know, scripture talks about being a faithful steward, not a, not a master, you right. know, or to be faithful stewards of what God's given us, but not to try to control every element. Okay, so we're not in control. I think we're getting that. But there are things that we are in control of. Responsible for. Responsible for. So big, different word. That's a huge distinction there. Yes. Okay. Okay, I think I'm starting to get a light blinking in my brain now. It's only taken three years. I know, Jeremy. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But that I I think that's an important distinction. And many of us run around thinking that, okay, I'm only going to do what I'm in control of. And the reality is you're not in control of anything. anything. Right. You're responsible. (sighs) I'm responsible for how I respond. My goal isn't to fix things. My goal isn't to control them. My goal needs to be to be faithful to God in them. How do I honor him? How do I glorify him? So in conflict, you know, people are conflicted and they usually become angry because of that conflict. And and they think what's going to bring peace and resolution is fixing 
what the problem is. Someone's mm-hmm. right, someone's wrong, and that's going to solve our problem. And you're usually the wrong one. I'm going right, to solve right. your problem. Why are you pointing well? at me? Because you're there <laughs> pressing my buttons. <laughs> but but it's really not about being right or wrong. Right. At the end of the day, that doesn't bring peace, being right or wrong. Uh, it just makes one person upset and the other person feels justified for about five minutes, mm-hmm. and then they find something else to be conflicted over. Right. What What brings peace is saying that, hey, I don't have to be right. What I have to be is faithful. What I have to be is honoring to God. I need to love my friend, my coworker, while I'm in conflict. I need to not be angry uh, about them not agreeing with me. You know, like about them maybe not agreeing with my political views. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And really, those are worldviews, right? I mean, I think that we call that we make everything political, but really, it's a worldview. Um, how I'm seeing the world, and if you see the world differently the way than I do, then I'm going to be angry because there's conflict in that situation. And what situation. that's going back is that my view is ultimately God's view. And I'm saying that everyone needs to conform to my view because right. my view is God's view. Rather than saying, no, actually everyone needs to conform to God's view. Yes. And, uh, and that's why human anger is not righteous anger. Godly anger is righteous anger. And humans can't have godly anger because they're not god (laughs) okay (laughs) at the end of the day then answer this because this is just a funny little thing here there's a meme every once in a while you'll see it on social media and it says if anyone ever asks you what would jesus do remind them that flipping over tables and chasing people with a whip is within the realm of possibilities (laughs) and it's great you know i want to live according to how the lord jesus lived this is what Jesus did in the temple. What do you have to say about that? It looks like he's angry. He, he also went around forgiving people of their sins, <laughs> healing the sick, raising the dead. So, I mean, like, the, if there's one thing I've learned in studying scripture, you can't just pick <laughs> one thing and choose that that's going to be my verse. That's going to be, you got to take it all in context. And, and, and there aren't multiple Jesuses. There's one Jesus, and he came to do a specific task for his father that no one else could do. If we could, we wouldn't have needed Jesus, okay? We're called to walk a different path. Each of us have a different path that God calls us to do, and we end up getting stressed and angry when we start to walk outside of that path because he hasn't promised to equip us for everyone's task. He's only promised to give us the grace and equip us for the task that he's given to us at hand. Mm -hmm. So when we bring on our own expectations and tasks that God hasn't given to us, or when we try to take on someone else's, when we try to take on God's role and responsibility— we overwhelm ourselves because we're not God. We're not Jesus. So mm-hmm. we shouldn't respond by flipping tables. <laughs> <laughs> He's given us instruction on how we ought to respond. And it's not that way. <laughs> wow. In fact, you know, you think about it. Is there any command in scripture where God commands us to be angry? Hmm. There's be angry and do not sin. Right. But the emphasis on there is don't sin. So try doing that and being angry at the same time, okay? <laughs> That's a good one. You know, this anger thing goes way back to the beginning. You know, we have the fall in Genesis chapter 3 where it's, we're separated from God uh, for, for selfish reasons. Mm-hmm. And then in Genesis 4, we see, you know, the Cain and Abel situation where anger became a real issue mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, one struck the other, you know? Right. And, and you know, I... I it goes back to our hearts, right? And I, I think, Mike, I know where you're going here. Um, we have to really look at our hearts and we have to realize that this anger that's in us, that's that's a natural thing for us. Um, the selfishness, that's a natural thing for us. And that's not what God intended for us. We receive that sin nature. That's what that's called. Uh, during At the fall, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, we inherited that sin nature. And God... Uh, says in his word that the wages of sin, what we earn because of our sin is death. Now, every single one of us <laughs> has sinned. Drive a car on I-15 in Utah, and chances are you've had some anger of some variety well up inside of you. That's just a reminder. Yes, you are a sinner and you need saving. You need a savior. There's the wages of sin is death, but God gives us a gift 
And that's eternal life, but it's found only in Jesus, only in Jesus, who was the only perfect one who came to earth. But the reason why he was perfect, yes, he was fully man, but he was God with us, Emmanuel, 100% God. He was the only one able to live a sinless life. And then he died on a cross, willingly laid his life down for you and for me. Why? You know, he doesn't want you to die in your sin. He mm-hmm. wants a relationship with you, one that was severed, and he restores that when he died on the cross. Yeah, that account in Genesis where we see the fall and sin entered, God demonstrates his compassion because he says, he doesn't say, you guys got yourself in this, you've got to get yourself out of it. What, is it, what does he do? He says, I'm going to fix your problem. I'm going to take on the consequences of your decisions. That's a God of grace. Mm-hmm. That's a God of compassion. And he recognized that that wasn't something we could fix ourselves. You know, like I, I work with addicts and we, we distinguish what's helping versus enabling. Okay. Enabling is helping someone do what they can do themselves. But helping is actually doing something for them that they can't do on their own. Mm-hmm. And that's what God does. He helps us. He's not our enemy. He's not up in heaven with lightning bolts. Just, you know, he just loves to push the buttons, you know, <laughs> not like everyone in this office. You know, God's not up there just trying to push our buttons. He's up there because he, he wants to help. And he doesn't just stay up there, right? He sent his son. He lived life. He did life side by side with us. He understood frustration. He understood temptation. He understood stress, right? In the garden, he's there under the olive tree, weeping tears of blood because of stress. But he wasn't sinning. Mm -hmm. He was able to be stressed and not sin. He was able to be angry and not sin. So the situation isn't that we, you know, the, the, the solution isn't I need to get rid of all the stress in my life. You know, or I need to get rid of every trigger in my life. The question is, how do I move forward in a relationship with God that strengthens me and grows me and matures me so that I don't have to let those triggers and stressors control my heart and produce angry fruit, but I maintain the fruit of the Spirit through that process, and it's only through His grace. Mm, That's so good. And my friend, you can have that gift. You can have that peace that only God can provide, okay? And that's just simply, and you, this is the beautiful part. He's done it all for you. You just trust in him. You place your full trust in what Jesus has done for you. It starts with that heart issue. Any sin that you had, that, and, and future sin for that matter, has been paid on the cross. Jesus paid it all. Cost him everything. Cost us. It costs us nothing. And you just trust in his finished work on the cross and just say, Jesus, thank you. And it's an amazing thing because when you are freed from that burden, it's amazing the things that God can do in your heart Mm. after that because he's not done because your circumstances have not changed, right? Your circumstances are still there, but now he's going to be working in your heart to help you deal with those in a godly fashion in a way that he is always meant for you to walk. And it's going to take time. It doesn't happen overnight, right? I mean, Mike, you know, you've been married to me for over 21 years. I no mean, comment. I, <laughs> God's that's still a godly working answer. on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I myself dealt with a lot of anger issues in my heart. Mike, you, you know fully well, and I'm just being real here. But over time, the Lord has been teaching me. When I, when I, when I failed miserably, I knew it. But I didn't go, oh, I'm a bad person. I must change myself. I ran to my Lord. I said, Lord, I screwed up again. You need to help me with this. And I allow him to teach me and to mold me and to fashion me so that I will I will continue to not react in that same way. But it takes time. And I think that's the other thing is we want everything to happen right away. And, and we want it to be perfect. Yes. <laughs> and yes. that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, and, and are you, But God's willing. God is willing and has done so much for us and spent the time with us to to go through all of these things with us and to fashion us uh, so that we don't react the same way, that we end up finding our strength in him. And he's willing to take the time to do that. And if God of the universe who created us is willing to take the time to do that, shouldn't we let him? Shouldn't we allow him that chance to do that? I, I don't even think it's a question of should we or shouldn't we. It's why wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why would we not choose something that can actually satisfy? You know, I think of uh, the passage in John, the woman at the well. You know, like you come to this well because you get thirsty every day and you think that this water is going to satisfy your thirst, but then you have to come back the next day and get more. Mm-hmm. Jesus says, I offer you living water. 
I'm the bread of life. I satisfy for eternity. You won't quench anymore when you, uh, I think it's Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we, when we actually really want to engage God and allow him to engage into our lives, uh, I, I think that's where we find the peace and satisfaction. We were able to trust him ultimately mm -hmm. and not have to control the circumstances uh, that, that we allow to trigger us. Mm -hmm. The reality is this. You're a human being and there are people around you who are human beings and they are going to trigger you some way. They're going to uh, disappoint you. There, there, there's going to be relationships that are going to falter. Your job is probably going to falter. I mean, that's life. You, you're not in control of those things. And then at the end of the day, you look in the mirror and you say, wow, you know what? I've disappointed myself. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just our reality. And if you're stuck in yourself, there is really, is there any hope? At the end of the day, I don't think so. Don't the, the scripture describes the nation of Israel, you know, right? God's chosen nation as really a misfit group, mm -hmm. you know? And what God's trying to elevate is like, I didn't choose you because you're something awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. I chose you because God's something awesome. Yes. All right. And he wants us to appreciate him as something far greater than ourselves. And, and yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, we reflect in our own life. I think all of us are, are, are going to be disappointed with where we're at what we see. But that's if we're only going to look at ourselves and not look at ourselves the way God does, which is ultimately through the lens of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's through his blood. And that's, that's where those, those voids in our hearts that are so deep become filled, not through ourselves, but through Christ. And that's where we find our satisfaction, mm -hmm. you know, is that Christ fills that void. I don't have to. The burden seems impossible and I don't have to carry it. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, look in the mirror and say, look what Jesus has done. Right. right. That's really where you're like, it, then you, instead of being disappointed and let down, you can look at yourself and say, but God loves me. Look what he's done for me. I am his child. And that's where you get your worth from. Your peace. Yeah. Your, your peace. And, oh, and, and you know, you're, you're going to have stress in this life. That's just a given. Right. But, but letting God can, well, because he's in control and just recognizing that right. he is and accepting. that you're not. It's really about accepting. Yeah, right? This is the reality <laughs> of the world. You need to just accept yeah. it rather than try to change it, like gravity. And yeah. it's good Don't to go to back to it. the theology of it all, too. God is sovereign. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is. And God loves you. Yeah, yeah. And so you put those two together and we can trust him. We can trust him for our salvation. We can trust him for our life. And we know that he's going to do a good work in him, in us if we allow him to do that. You know, and I think of Galatians 5, 16, and you meant, er, mentioned that earlier. And I think a lot of our conversations go back to that verse the when we talk the about spirit, yeah. it. It is. If we're walking with the Lord, the things around us can be less important. Mm -hmm. If we have that connection, that relationship, that walk, that fellowship, then what's spinning around us, we have our focus on what's not spinning, the right. solid rock. Right. And we don't have to be things we're not. We don't have to do things that don't need to be done. Mm -hmm. We can't all be Mike. Yeah, I'm not saying I got this down, man. <laughs> no, no, don't no. get me wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's what I'm saying, though, is like we can't all be you and, and no one out there can be someone else. Right. You know, we just have to be the person that God's called us to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, to, and trust God with everything else. Mm -hmm. And that would include relationships of the people you love. Like if you see somebody who is, is walking in a dangerous path, you do what you're responsible for, like what you said, uh, but knowing that God is in ultimate control and just bring that person to the Lord and say, and pray for them. Be there when you need to be there. But if God, if you could trust God for your eternal soul, which is eternity, by the way, you can trust him for these things here on earth mm -hmm. too. He is a trustworthy, loving God. And we need to remember who he is. That That's the right view of God. It right. really is. No, and I think Mike hit it because God's the anchor. Yes. He doesn't change. And that's why we can ground ourselves in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can we look for the gospel opportunities in our challenges, in our life challenges? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeremy, this went so fast and we are really approaching our time limit for radio, which is amazing. Um, do you have any 
uh, in the last minute we have left, do you just have any practical things that we could do on our journey uh, in in dealing with our stress and our anger and, of course, getting closer to the Lord? You know, I think what we were talking about earlier, really, I, I would say if, if there's one thing I was challenge you is is set aside some time each day, preferably probably in the morning or in the evening, get away, get to a quiet place, take some time to reflect and be in God's word mm-hmm. and, and start to see how that how that starts to change your outlook uh, and reorient you back to the Prince of Peace, uh, who is Christ Jesus. Oh, that's so good. Okay, you are, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day. Jeremy, thank you so much as well for spending time with us. If you want to know more, you can go to foundchristcouncil.org. Is that correct? Correct. Fantastic. And um, my friend, if you have questions still and you want to text them, please do so. Um, We can connect you uh, with Jeremy for a little time. He's here in Utah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. This has been Mike and Heather in the Morning, a production of Key Radio, located in beautiful Provo, Utah. For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.